live. Hi, my name is Tyree Simon. Today I have a special guest. She is the former Invicta FC strawweight champion. She's on a seven-fight win streak, and she'll be facing UFC veteran Tisha Torres at UFC Fight Night 173 on June 20th. Brianna the Bull Van Buren. Brianna, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I can't complain too much. How does it, how's it feel getting ready for this fight? I'm sorry. Can you say that again? I said, how is it getting ready for this fight? Are you, you prepared? Are you, how, how has it been during you know, this, these circumstances? Oh, it's been awesome. Uh, nothing has really changed for me. Um, I'm still uh, just still training, still have my, my set training partners, and um, still staying focused. So nothing has really changed for me through this whole pandemic. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're going to get into your fight with Tisha Torres in a second, but, you know, first I want to get to know you a little bit more. How did you get into MMA? Um, I did it more for fitness. Um, I did it as off season. I was playing soccer. Mm -hmm. And then um, my uncle, who at the time was a professional um, fighter, uh, he fought for Strike Force. And oh, nice. then. Um, he also was the Golden Gloves uh, champion as well. Um, so I was introduced through fighting through my uncle and then um, just kind of just stuck with it. That's interesting. I, I didn't, I, I, I was doing my research. I didn't know that. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, my uncle, uh, he and I, so originally I remember telling him I wanted to just do boxing I didn't want to kickbox I just wanted yeah. to box and at the time he was already transitioning from boxing to um MMA and um I remember uh we he had a garage uh set up as a gym um and I would go over there and basically just work out and then after that, um, I did a you know a couple of tournaments, and I just kind of fell in love with it. Well, that's cool. So, when did you start exactly? Uh, I started. I want to say I had my first kickboxing tournament at the age of fourteen. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I I have. I also hold a black belt too under um, my uncle. Um, uh, Anthony Figueroa, um, but I started, I was introduced to Stan Shao kickboxing, which is basically oh, Chinese okay. kickboxing. Yeah. So you started, you started at, at you started training at 14. Mm -hmm. and, and if I'm mistaken, you had your first career fight and at age 19, right? I had my, I made my professional MMA fight, uh, or my professional debut at the age of 18. 18, wow. Yeah, I fought uh, Charlene Gellner. Oh, okay. Yeah, at the age of 18. Were there any amateur fights before that, or just went straight to, to pro? Oh, yeah, I've had, I have amateur fights as well. Um, I have amateur fights in Muay Thai and, uh, and in MMA as well. Um, I can't remember my record as an amateur, but... I have a, I have a handful of fights as an amateur, and then I did a lot of um, kickboxing tournaments as well. We would have like these in-house kickboxing tournaments. I remember I would go to um, uh, at Kung Lee's uh, gym. They would have them like in San Jose area or at American Kickboxing Academy, and I was a little girl that was doing those kickboxing tournaments. So, so. If you had amateur fights, you know, you, you had your pro debut at 18. That means you, may have, you must have started amateur 17, 16 years old? Uh, I started amateur at the age of, I think at the time it was called pan pancreas. It, it was like a pancreation fight or pancreas oh, nice. fight. Um, at the time, they couldn't say it was uh, amateur mm -hmm. um, MMA, but... I did pan a pancreation fight. I want to say I was 14 turning 15. Mm. And then um, I think my first fight, her name was Delicia, Del Delicia Velasquez. That was my first uh, pancreas or, or amateur MMA fight in the cage. Um, and then uh, as far as, uh, I, I just kept doing them ever since then. Like I was doing, I was taking amateur fights from, 
from 14, I would say, till um, till I transitioned to pro. You know, it's interesting because, you know, your record is is nine and two, but you have so much experience. Yeah, I've been doing it for a long time. I also wrestled, too, in high school. Uh, I wrestled a year in high school, um, and then I decided I wanted to become a professional uh, MMA fighter as soon as I graduated high school. Graduated early because I decided that this is what I wanted to do, and um, at the time, uh, I was, you know, living with uh, my uncle, who uh, was also, you know, a professional uh, MMA fighter. So we we had an agreement, and it was like, okay, well, you want to be a professional fighter, then you know, he he basically guided the way the road for me. Oh, nice. So, yeah. he, so you would say he was he was your biggest influence into getting into MMA. Oh, a hundred percent. He's my biggest influence uh, from then until now as well. Um, it, he's he's always been a huge impact on my life. I think ever since when I was a young girl, um, a little girl, um, you know, I've always kind of I've always looked up to him. Um, I thought it was kind of the biggest, uh, the coolest thing ever for him to be, you know, to know somebody who was a professional fighter, and you know, at the time. Um, you know, he was like a superstar to me. So for mm. me, it was kind of like, oh my God, I want to be just like that guy, you know? So I remember going to, I remember going to school and like telling all my friends and stuff, yeah, my uncle's a professional fighter and, you know, I'm going <laughs> to be like him one day. And, you know, and I remember telling people like, I want to fight Layla Ali. It was never, I wanted to wow, be okay. a professional. Yeah, it was never me wanting to be a professional kickboxer or an MMA fighter. It was, I want to be... A boxer. I want my my goal one day is to fight Lay Lolly. And I remember I did like a whole presentation on my uncle. Um, I think it was uh, in eighth grade, and um, I was basically that's when I kind of realized like this is you know this is what I want to be and this is who I want to be um, because Anthony uh, at the time and now um, you know was was a huge like he was like a superstar to me basically. <laughs> Yes, your uncle sounds super cool. To <laughs> be honest with you. Yeah, he's legit, but I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to say that right now because if he <laughs> listens to this and his head. I don't want his his head to get too big, you know. But yeah, he's 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 all right. He's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what made you not follow through with a boxing? Did was it just you know you you your uncle was such an influence that you said you wanted to stick with MMA or or what was it? He was just such a huge influence on me, and then I kind of real I realized like I was around so many kickboxers and stuff, and this is this is gonna sound pretty. Um, it, it's not gonna sound as well. It sounds mean, but it wasn't as mean as it was then. But I remember t talking to my uncle and telling him, "I just want to box. I, I just want to box." And he's like, "Well, if you want to box, you gotta learn how to kickbox. Like, you know, you're gonna learn how to kickbox too. You're gonna learn how to kick. You're gonna learn how to punch." You're gonna learn how to do it all. And I just remember just like, oh, okay, like, you know, whatever. I'm doing it for fitness because at the time I was just doing it, you know, as off season for soccer and just to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. And um, I started, I remember I was doing, I was kickboxing and, you know, and he was like, you wanna do it, you wanna do a kickboxing tournament? I think you should do a kickboxing tournament. You should try it out. And I remember I was like, uh, okay, like, <laughs> you know, sure, I'll try it. And when I won my first kickboxing tournament, I think my confidence, I, I gained so much confidence. So then I was like, okay, well, well, maybe I could do this. I, I actually, I won my tournament and I think they signed me up and like, an, it was a all adult, it was like an adult tournament. Um, he put me in the adult division. Wait, wait, you're like, you're still like 17 years old. Yeah, yeah. I, I think at the time I might've been like 15, 16 actually. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, and he he's like, oh, there's no there's no girls in your division, so you know I put you in the the beginner adult division. Like everything's gonna be okay. Like you know the nerves are normal, and I was like, yeah, everything's gonna be okay. The nerves are normal, you know. So and then again, I won that tournament, and I was just like, woohoo! I want to do another one. <laughs> so your your uncle, you know, basically threw you into the fire, and you you just. You just succeeded no matter what. Yeah, it's such a, it's, it's so awesome. Like even, 
it just recently, I remember him talking about it. Like in the beginning of my camps, he always says, so you want to be a fighter or damn it. Like I, I'm, it's my fault. I introduced you to this, and, you know, and I look at him and I'm like, yeah, you kind of did. But in the end, just look how successful you are though. Yeah, but I'm not satisfied. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. I like to hear that. Yeah. So did you always grow up in Gilroy, California or, or did you move there when you started training? Um, so I came from, I, so I lived in Sacramento. Okay. I lived in San Jose. Um, I lived on the South side of San Jose. I lived on the East side of San Jose. I lived in Morgan Hill <laughs> and then, um, but my family is originally from Gilroy. Okay. Um, that this is where my roots are at, are, um, is Gilroy, California. Um, my mother, uh, I lived with my mother up into the age of, I want to say 13. Okay. Uh, turning 14. Um, and then I moved in with my uncle, um, and he then kind of took me underneath his wing from there. But I, I grew up. I basically was in, like I said, in what, one, five different cities um, mm. from the age of, I want to say from the age of two till um, 13. And then I, I uh, went to school. I remember going to school, elementary school in Gilroy for about a year. And then I went and moved to San Jose, stayed over there for two years, moved with my mom, and then came back to Gilroy, moved with my mom in Gilroy, mm. and then Morgan Hill, and then so forth. So I've been all over the place. Yeah, that sounds like a lot. Um, if, you may, if I may ask, uh, why did you move so much, you know, at young Yeah, I, I think it was just the transition, in, the transition with my mother. Um, okay. My mom just basically... Um, I don't really know too much about, you know, why she decided to move so much. Okay. Um, but uh, I was basically, uh, during that time of me moving so much, I was living with my mom. Um, oh. And then when I left at the age of 13 um, to move in with my uncle, I was going through a lot of stuff at home, um, okay. you know, that, that basically... I would say Anthony, my uncle, which basically took me from that, ne took me from like a negative situation that could have gone worse and turned it into a positive. And so here I am today. You know, I, I keep saying, I said it before, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it again. Your uncle sounds super cool. I know you're not, not going to pop him up and say it, <laughs> but your uncle sounds super cool and I would love to, to talk with him. As you well. totally should. He's a cool guy. Yeah, he's he's very knowledgeable. Um, he he is he has definitely been through a lot too. I remember um, not too long ago, a couple months ago, we we were driving up to San Francisco to help uh, Carrie Melendez um, for her fight camp, and mm -hmm. um, I remember him. He opened up to me, and like he, I basically was asking him so many questions about like his childhood and everything, you know, and. Uh, that guy's been through a lot, and he he definitely has a lot of knowledge. And even I've said so many times, like he should definitely write a book. My mm. uncle should definitely write a book. He's been through a lot, and if you get a chance to speak to him, I would say you're pretty freaking lucky. <laughs> I would love to speak to him. I will. I really would. Yeah. So. You know, you started your, your career at 18 years old. You know, what was it like for you to get your first win? It was awesome. Um, it was ex exactly what I wanted. Uh, I I uh, knocked her out, I believe, uh, first, first... First round, round, I believe. Yeah, first round knockout. Um, I'm somebody who... I'm a goal getter. I love to set goals, and I'm very hard on myself, though, also. So... I'm like, I need to do this. And if I don't do this, then, you know, I, I can, I tend to be a little hard on myself. Mm. So when I got that knockout um, against Charlene Gellner, that was something huge for me. That was a big accomplishment for me. But I knew that it wasn't the end. And I, I knew that once I started, once I started this um, profession, 
I knew that I wanted to be a, a world champion. So yeah. for me, it's not over. And that's why I said, uh, you know, I'm not satisfied. Um, you know, even me getting the Invicta belt, like a lot of people are like, whoa, how do you feel? Like, this is awesome. Right. Like, this is a huge deal, you know. But for me, like, I'm not satisfied because there's more, uh, there's more for me out there, if that makes sense. No, it, it, it totally does. It totally does. Um, so I also want to know, like, where do you train at primarily? Um, in, your, in your bio, I've seen that you, you train at Ant Dog, but you also train at AKA as well. That is correct. Um, so I am normally at AKA during the day, aside, okay. aside from like all this pandemic and everything, uh, right. I'm at AKA 12 to 2, noon practice 12 to 2 every day. Um, and then at night I get my training in, uh, in my hometown at my uncle's gym at Am Dogs MMA. And then early in the morning, I'm very fortunate that, you know, my uncle, has his his gym that you know I'm able to work out in the morning and I we we set our own or basically our set we we set our schedule um, around the time we we want and then Fridays um, from ten to twelve at Amp Dog so I spend majority of my time at, at, in my hometown in Gilroy but I'm at AKA from twelve to two. So this uh, just just hearing that you know you've been training. Um, especially with your uncle as well. This pandemic didn't really seem like it had that much of an effect on, on your training. It didn't. In the beginning, it was just a weird time. It was a weird thing going on. You know, it was, right. you know, people were freaking out. Even I was freaking out. I was getting, like, these weird panic attacks, I think, you know, mm. because I was coming off of a, sur a surgery as well. And, you know, I'm not somebody who can just sit home and basically do nothing. I have to keep myself busy. Right. I have to keep my mindset busy. So I was, I was having, I was giving, getting some like anxiety, panic attacks. And, you know, it was weird in the beginning. But then, um, you know, I just, I got closer with my family and opened up to my family even more. And, you know, um, and we just we we trained and you know and the fight opportunity presented itself they threw tisha at me and you know i accepted and and now here we are um you said you had an injury right mm -hmm. yeah i had a uh a trigger it's called trigger finger have you heard of that no i haven't actually okay so basically i guess it happens a lot it's common a lot with like jujitsu uh, players, they get it a lot. Um, a lot of wrestlers get it. Um, from my understanding, boxers get it. Mm -hmm. It's basically uh, your finger starts to lock up. Um, so my right hand, my think, where is that? Okay, there it is. My my finger, my finger would lock up. So I can I can even bend it every okay. time like, I would make a fist. Like it would click and it would pop. Wow. Yeah, so I was trying to get through the Hannah Cypher fight. I was scheduled to fight Hannah Cypher. In That's January. right. That's right. And I remember going to the PI, and I got in, I, I got in three different opinions from three different doctors, and they said the same exact thing. So it came down to, okay, you need surgery. Otherwise, you know, longevity-wise, like, you're, this is going to put you out. It's going to continue to hurt. It's going to continue to lock up. It's not going to get better. Mm -hmm. So, um, doctor had to go in there and, uh, do her work. Yeah, it's interesting, because I, I do remember your fight was announced earlier this year against Hannah Cyphers, um, mm -hmm. and then you, 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 uh, had to pull out, and they, they, they said undisclosed reason, they haven't given a reason why, um, yeah. and then, uh, you know, just Angela Hill will take the fight, and the story goes from there. But that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so that was the reason why I had to get surgery. Um, and again, I wanted to wait until after the fight, but mm. there was no way for me to wait. Like I wanted, I, I had set goals and like I said, like I'm somebody who's like, I want to get things accomplished at a certain time and a certain, you know, point in my right. life, which can sometimes be stressful, but right. that's how I like to live my life. But it's, honestly, it's, it's good that you waited a little bit because... You fight Tisha Torres, who is a UFC veteran, who mm -hmm. has been on main cards and has, you know, had 
for a lot of people that's the best of the best in the UFC. So this, this is actually a, a better situation. Yeah, I, I really do believe everything happens for a reason and everything is in God's timing. Like, I, I, I'm a big believer in that. And, um, you know, and now look at I'm getting presented with this opportunity to fight yeah. somebody who's ranked number 12. Yeah. Um, you know, had I fought Hannah Cyphers, what would have happened? I don't know. And I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on, you know, um, what's in front of me and i have my hands full with tisha torres come uh next weekend you did call for a ranked opponent after your last fight i'm sorry what i said you you did uh call for a ranked opponent your last fight after your, your win against leaving leaving ha souza you called for a ranked opponent yeah i wanted and this is the fights that i want i want a challenge you know i want i want and i'm not putting anything past any of the other girls but I, I'm here to, I want to be the best. So right. I need to fight the best and I need to fight whoever they're going to put in front of me that's going to help me get to the top. So Tisha Torres, unfortunately, she is in my way. Um, uh, set aside, aside after this fight, we can be friends, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going in and this is all business for me. I like to hear that. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the things that I found interesting in my research about you was, you know, when you were, I believe, 20 or 21 years old, you you, 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 went, you debuted in Invicta mm -hmm. and you lost. Mm -hmm. And then you took three years off mm -hmm. and then you came back. And since then, you've been on fire. Yeah. My, my question is, what happened in between those three years that has, you know, helped you get to where you are? I think, to be quite honest with you, it's the... It's the maturity, it's the focus, it's the drive. It's, you know, me literally waking up in the morning, looking at myself and telling myself, what do you want to do with your life? What do you want? What do you want? How do you want to live? What is, what is it that you want to do? Do you want a nine to five job? Do you want to go and work behind a, you know, a, a computer all day do you want to you know do you want to fight do you want to you know do you want to model what is it that you want to do and I literally sat with myself and told myself that I need to figure out my life I cannot allow other people to try to control or you know want things for me I need to want things for myself be I want to be the UFC champion I, you know, I wanted to become the Invicta Strawweight champion. I've had goals and dreams written down since I, you know, since I started this the mixed martial arts. And one of my biggest goals was I need to become the Invicta Strawweight champion. I need to become the UFC Strawweight champion by this time, this time, and this time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so it was me sitting myself down and looking at myself in the mirror and telling myself, what is it that you want to do? And what is, how am I going to do it? And so I'm, you know, and, and I'm doing it. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You won the Invicta uh, Phoenix series, you know, beating three people in the same night, two of them UFC veterans, mm -hmm. and to win a strawweight mm -hmm. champion. What, yeah. What was that moment like for you? To, to finally come back, and you took three years off, you come back, you won, your, 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 uh, you won two fights in a row, and then you go into the Invicta uh, tournament and, and win, win it all. Yeah. So that just goes to show to you that, you know, like I am basically, I, I am living proof that, you know, if you want something and you, you want, if you want something, something so bad, you just go out there and you just work your butt off and, you know, and it'll happen. And, right. that, and, and, and that's what happened that night. I knew exactly, you know, I wanted something so bad, I decided to put my nose down, put my head down, and just grind, and show up to practice, listen to my coaches, and just put 110% full faith into, you know, whatever they believe, just believing and trusting the process. Never did I question anything. I'd show up to practice, and, you know, my coach, there were times where my coach would be, Anthony would be like, okay, today we're going to rest a little bit. All right, if that's what we're going to do, that's what we're going to do, because... 
you know, that's what he felt that was better for me that day. And then there were times where, you know, it was like, okay, today we're going to, we're, we're working hard. We're sparring, we're doing this. And, you know, and I sure I come home and be like, oh, I'm so exhausted. I didn't, you know, I could have easily skipped out on practice, but right. I kept my head down. I kept my nose down and I just grinded. And, you know, and I think if you want something that bad, you just work, you work for it. You trust, you believe, you, you know, you, you believe in the process and, and have faith and that's it. Everything, everything just unfolds. It you know what? Happened. It happened. Hearing your story, and I know I know that you're like you, you're on social media and you, you spread positivity and motivation, you know. And, and knowing your story, knowing your history of, of how you got to where you are, you can see why why you had that positive vibe in you. You're awesome. That's that's a really good. I'll take that's a really good compliment. Thank that's you. true. It's it's very true. It's very I, true. I just I try to just live. I I try to just be be real, be genuine be you know just be myself uh i know that there there's so many people in this world who who just put on a front they you know they just try to they try they put on this whole acting thing and you know this is me this right. is what you get and you know i tried to live my life every day is just you know i have goals i need to accomplish i try to be a good person and i i just work hard and bust my butt that that's all i could do and just be positive yeah. You know, be around. Yeah, my uncle has always told me, "You are who you surround yourself around mm. with. You are you are who you surround yourself with." And you know that is one thing, one of the biggest things that stuck with me. That, and then also, uh, if you're out past ten o'clock at night, there ain't nothing going on, and nothing good is happening after ten o'clock. I remember you'd always tell me that. And so those are the two things that I live by every single day. Am I getting good rest? Am I, you know, and right. who am I surrounding myself with? Am I surrounding myself around good people? You know, and, and if I'm doing those two things, then I think I'm doing okay in life. I, I the, the one thing, the 10 at, 10 at night, depends <laughs> on where you are. <laughs> if you're in New York City, Hey, it don't end. Hey, if that's the life that you want to live, that's the life <laughs> you want to live. <laughs> I ain't in New York City, though. <laughs> but I, I just love that you're so positive and that you have this, this, you know, this motivation to want to be better. And, you know, I, I see a lot of people in the UFC, particularly, some people try to fake it, like you said, or try to act a different way, but you're going about it just being who you are. Yeah, that's all I could be. Uh, that's all I could be. I could, you know, because I do better when I'm just myself. Right. Um, and I think everybody just, you you know, you're, people can be, a, you could be a good person when you're genuinely yourself. If you were just, if, if I put on this show, this tough act and, you know, and, right. and, and whatnot, then it's like, then I'm forcing to be something that I'm not. And, and that's not what I want to leave behind. I, I want to be genuinely myself, you know? Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'll, I'll still, I, I, I'll punch somebody in the face, you know? Right, I'm, obviously. I'm competitive and, you know, and, you know, if somebody says something to me, I'll say something back, but I'm genuinely like, this is just who I am, you yeah. know? I try to just be loyal and just be real and just be myself. That's all I could be. And the fans will know it too. When you when you're when you're acting yourself and being yourself, the fans respect that and and, and appreciate that as well. Oh, a hundred percent. People in general will respect that. Fans are right. no fans. I think people like even if you have people who don't like you, they will genuinely respect you if you right. are yourself. You know. So yeah. You know you. you I again we're we're halfway through this interview, but I I, I just. The vibe that you have and that, that positivity in your story, it's incredible, man. Thank you. So you made your UFC debut that same year, 2019, uh, against Levan Levan Souza. And one of the things that impressed me the most about, about your performance was your coaches, your, you and your coach, your 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 understanding of each other. Mm -hmm. You know, the coach would say in, in between rounds, hey, I want you to stop clinching. I want you to go to the body. And you would do it. You know, yeah. 
they said to 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 drop to you did had takedown. You, you took her all the way up to your coaches for instructions. Yeah. What that is your go, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Now I was gonna say, what is your relationship like with your coaches that you just you're so in sync that in, even in the fight? It's the loyalty. And that goes back to the, the, the communication, the loyalty, and me believing in me trusting the process. Mm. I have I I tell my I tell Anthony all the time, when I am willing to die in there, I'm willing to die winning. I am willing to go out there and win. I am willing to do whatever it takes to win. And I think me pu- putting all of my faith and you know belief into this into my coaches, I think that is that is what makes you know uh, this such such a beautiful disaster. It makes right. it such you know that's the beauty of it is like that's why I have such a strong relationship, a good communication skills with him is because I I I believe in everything that he says. I never question anything. And I know that one day he's going to make me a world champion. Again. 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 Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> How can you want a tournament? You beat three people in one night. How can you forget that? It's because I'm not satisfied. <laughs> it's yeah. I'm, like I, I can like. Uh, even after the tournament, you know, I've had so many friends and, you know, family and people tell me, like, relax, like, it's cool. Like, I'm like, no, let's go back out there. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Like, I'm not hurt, you know, because I'm not satisfied where I'm at. There's always more room for improvement. Mm. I like it. I like yeah. I, I like that mentality. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just feel like you know, if I'm satisfied and if I'm just like, oh, okay, like you know, I got you, I got the bell, and you know, and this and that, and then, then it's like I don't know. For me, I just feel like then I'm content, and I, I if I'm content with where I'm at, then why am I doing what I'm doing? Mm. You know, I'm not happy. I'm not happy where I'm at. I'm, you know, I have a fiance who who is still working. He has a nine to five. I'll be content. I'll be happy when, you know, I'm, my skills are, you know, he doesn't ever have to work a day in his life. My family is, you know, they're, they're content. They, they, you know, my uncle has a ranch and, you know, he doesn't have to stress about, you know, bills or anything like that. I don't have no, you know, then I'll be content when my family is healthy and, you know, they, they don't have to worry about bills, then I'll be content. But until then, I, I got a job. I got a job to do. I got business to take care of. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> On June 20th, you'll face Tisha Torres, a UFC fighter at 173. What are your thoughts on Tisha Torres as an, as an opponent? Um, I think it's a good fight. Um, a lot of people are, you know, saying that we're, the, we're about the same height. I think I'm a little shorter. Um, I have a longer reach advantage. Mm. Um, but I think it's a good fight. Um, I know that she's going to come in, she's coming in hot. She, you know, she's on a four fight losing streak, um, against, against yeah. some tough opponents. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm not looking, I'm not taking her lightly, you know, I'm not looking past her, but, um, it's going to be my night. I'm, I'm going in there to finish her. I'm not going to leave it in the judge's hands. Is there any concerns or anything you've been you've been uh, you know trying to figure out with you know there's no crowds now so you can hear the coaches audibly talking? Is there anything you got you're worried about a little bit? I'm I'm not worried about anything um, as far as like the coaches and whatnot because again my coaches and I we have a good connection we you know we commute we're in sync so um, you know I'm not worried about that I'm not worried about you know there not being any um, you know an audience. Uh, it'll just kind of, it'll go back to, you know, for the Invicta, when I fought for Invicta, there wasn't that many people there for the, you know, the tournament. I heard my oh. coaches loud and clear. So um, not too worried about that at all. Um, I just, you know, I I hope all, all of the fighters are healthy and nobody tests positive for this whole COVID thing. For and, a fact. You know. I'm just I I'm, I want everything to just continue to go smooth. You know? right. So, yeah. 
a victory over, over Torres will put you, you know, in the in the rankings. I believe you'll you'll probably be even in the top ten if you think about you think it. So? I think so. Yeah, I, I hope so. I think so. You're 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 a former Invicta champion. I believe I believe personally you have a, a ton of buzz going going with you going into this fight. Yeah. You have a, perfect, a, a great performance against Tisha Torres. Yeah, I, I would think you as a, as a new strawweight, I would I would definitely see you in the top ten. Yeah, and that's I, I would hope so. That'd be awesome. Um, again, though, like I'm just focusing on the fight and just focusing on trying to leave a statement out there. Right. Um, I don't I don't want it to go to. I don't like when you know my fights go to the the judges because now it's in their hands and. Both of my know. losses, yeah, both of my losses are from, you know, the judges. And I just don't like it. I, it leaves a sour taste in my mouth. Well, we could definitely see you, you know, beat Tisha Torres at UFC 173 on June 20th. Are we saying knockout? I would say definitely a knockout. Um, if not, then, you know, I'll take her to deep waters. And I already know she's she's stressing over my wrestling um, so if I have to, I'll take her, I'll take her to the deep waters and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll let the opportunity present itself, but let's just say I'm hoping for a knockout. You know, and your jujitsu is good too. I've seen, I've seen your, your Oma Plata sweep, uh, in your last fight, you used the Oma Plata just, just to get up to, up to your feet and then land a big takedown. Yeah, I, I, I have a brown belt in jujitsu and I actually tried to compete in, uh, jiu-jitsu during my off time of, you know, if I don't have fights or anything coming up. Mm -hmm. um, I did win. I know as a blue belt, I won uh, No Gi Worlds. So that nice. Was an accomplishment. Yeah. I try to stay busy everywhere. And that's what I think, too, is I'm going to be I'm this new breed. I think I'm this new. A lot of these girls are one dimensional. And mm. I, I think I I, that's what I, I want to put a statement on June 20th. I want to come in, you know, and, you know, leave a big, like, this girl's a new breed. I want people to, like, be like, okay, like, this girl is, she's good everywhere. She's not just a one, she's not just a wrestler. She's not just a grappler. She's yeah. not just a kickboxer. You know, my uncle has always told me, you can, you, we're going to punch with, you know, we're going to kickbox with kickboxers, we're going to wrestle with wrestlers, and we're going to grapple with grapplers. And, you know, and that has still instilled in my head still to this day. So I'm, I'm going to be that new breed. I'm super excited to see you, your second fight in the UFC. Uh, before, I let you, before I let you go, I want to get some, some, some fun facts about you so the fans know a little bit more. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. All right. Favorite hobby outside of, of fighting? Um, gardening, cooking, yoga, uh, riding my bike. Nice. Best dish you can, you can make? Best dish I can make. Ooh, chili vedre. Chili, chili what? Chili vedre. I've it's, never heard of that before. It's a Hispanic, um, it's, it's pork and like a spicy green sauce. <laughs> or, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, or um, I would say best dish, best best dish. Mm, mm, I don't know. Uh, tacos. You said tacos? Yes. Yeah. You know, I probably shouldn't have asked you that when I haven't ate all day yet. <laughs> oh, here I go teasing you. I'm sorry. Yeah. See, so now, now I want some tacos. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know people. I hate when people ask this this question, but I'm afraid differently. Mm -hmm. What is one of your favorite movies to watch? I'm not a movie person, but a favorite movie I would say is probably Million Dollar Baby or Tarzan. The the animated Tarzan. Yes. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I no. I, no. It's a classic. <laughs> it's a classic. Yes. It never gets old. It makes me feel good. Piggybacking off of that, what is one of your favorite cartoons growing up? Favorite cartoons? Oh, yeah. uh, Rugrats. All growing up or regular Rugrats? Regular Rugrats. Okay. Yeah. Um, or I would say, I like Jimmy Neutron too. <laughs> and Spongebob. <laughs> you know what? I, I could get down with Spongebob, Jimmy Neutron. 
Not so much. No. Not so much. <laughs> Not so much. I'm sorry. That's all good. What is your favorite post fight snack? Post fight snack. Post fight snack. Um, <laughs> uh, trail mix. That's your favorite post fight snack? No, I no, I shouldn't say that. Post fight snack. Like after you don't have to worry about weight cutting, you don't have to worry about anything. You just eat whatever you want. I kind of eat healthy outside of fighting. Wow. Yeah, I'm I'm such a lame mode, but I would, say, <laughs> I would say my father in law's pizza, but that's not a snack though, right? So we'll say pizza though. Okay, pizza. Chicken. Uh, I would say not chicken. I would say uh pesto pizza or um he makes this sausage with caramelized onions. Oh my god, pizza oh my god, it's so good. Yeah. Pizza. Or or tacos or chicken wings. <laughs> All right, I'm definitely getting something to eat after we finish this interview. Um, <laughs> and lastly, how did you get your nickname, The Bull? Uh, my grandfather. He used to call me The Bull. He used to call me El Corito, which means baby bull in Spanish, um, when I was a little girl. And then uh, it kind of just stuck with me. Um, it, I think it's because I like to come forward a lot. Mm. Um, but also, I think... It's also my attitude outside of fighting. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Well, we can see the bull, Brianna Van Buren, next Saturday, June 20th, facing Tisha Torres, number, number ranked 12, I believe. One win right into the rankings, maybe top 10. I'm calling it now. That would be awesome. I'm calling hey, it. Hey, if, if I get on the top 10, then I need to come back on your show so we can talk about that. There we go. There we go. <laughs> but you could definitely see uh, Brianna face Tisha Torres June 20th on ESPN+. Plus. Brianna, thank you for coming on. I definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Signing off, my name is Tyree Simon. This is Brianna Van Buren. Bye-bye. This has been a special interview. Goodbye, guys. <laughs>